Um, hello again. Uh, it's been some time since we I had the chance to talk with Rachel, and uh, it's a pleasure to do that again. And uh, it's a pleasure to do that and talking about uh, the Shining Tribe Tarot deck. Um, Rachel, um, what what is the most important thing for you in this Shining Tribe? Tarot deck. Um, what's what's the main what was the main objective when you start doing it? It's a little hard to say. I, to some extent, it had to do with the fact that they were this was the age in which people first started making individual decks. It was the '80s, and uh, suddenly there was an explosion of new decks. You know, hundreds of different decks coming out. So it seemed like a nice idea to do one. Okay. And my concerns at the time, and still to a large extent, were in prehistoric and shamanic art and traditions. So that was interesting to me to try to bring in all these different sources and not have it be a traditional European kind of style. But I think to, the essence to me of the deck is that of um, kind of spiritual guidance, really. It's a little bit less... I, I, you know, if someone comes to me for a reading and they say they have very practical questions like business or something like this, I'll usually yeah. use the writer deck. Uh, but if they want to know where they're going in life or they want to explore um, the unconscious, something like that, uh, mm -hmm. I will have contact with the gods and goddesses, I'll use the Shining Tribe deck. So okay. it's that kind of approach to me. Um, and... Um and uh, uh, you had, I think you had first the, the idea that someone was going to illustrate your deck and then finally you did it yourself. Yes, that's right. I tried a couple of people and the first person did two exquisite pictures, really beautiful art, and decided it was way too much work. And so she bowed out, which is really a shame. I think that a deck done with her would have been phenomenal. She was a gorgeous artist. And then mm -hmm. I tried it with another artist, um, and he kind of wanted to do his own thing. He had, his whole idea was to add modern bits to uh, these very ancient images, so it'd be a sort of prehistoric shaman wearing a modern wristwatch or something like that, and that didn't interest me. And then I tried with one more person, and she her concern really was to do her own ideas, so she was taking it away from what I was thinking about. And meanwhile, I had done some sketches of what I wanted, and I showed them to the famous uh, artist, Nikki de San Fal, whose pictures are, of course, behind you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Nikki said, oh, you should do it yourself, do your own pictures. So I decided to follow her, and then I started giving more attention, redoing them, making more of an effort, studying a little bit about the body and things like this. Mm -hmm. I would, like, go into the poses and seeing... Um, how the body looked in the mirror and stuff like that because so I have more of a sense of how to draw and when they were further along and I showed them to Nikki some other time she said, ah, said I was right she said I was right so she kind of took credit which she deserved to do really mm -hmm. if she had an encouragement I never would have done it myself mm -hmm. and uh, I know you, you think of this tarot deck as a, a sort of um, um, a response, something that talks to the writer deck, uh, not not just each not just following the writer the writer deck, but mm -hmm. it's sort of a um, sort of conversation between both. There's a sort of conversation between both decks here. Yeah. So um, I think that was a little unconscious, actually. I don't think that, I didn't set out to do that. I think it worked out that way, partly because I have such a strong. Um, Connection with the writer deck over so many years, mm -hmm. you know. So some of the cards, um, they would be a kind of response, almost unconsciously, to the writer mm -hmm. deck. So, for instance, the Five of Pentacles in the writer deck shows people sick and miserable and outside of church. And then in the Shining Tribe deck, the Five of Stones shows um, spirit beings emerging from the rock to heal people. So it's a healing of that which is injured and hurt in the Five of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. And um, as you as you did it, uh, do you think uh, you achieve your goals that uh, really uh, 
this this what what you intended to do uh, is there um, is this is was this really successful um, this your tarot deck for you was it really well successful? it's always it's, you know, it's always very hard to say that because you really don't know as, as an artist you can't say yourself whether something is successful or not um, it was not successful in the sense of reaching a very large audience. And I think if I did another deck, I would not stray so far from the images people recognize. Because mm -hmm. I think people need to be anchored in the images that they recognize and they work with. So that was a bit of a problem. Um, you know, some of the pictures they ended up not being entirely satisfied with. There's, there's always things that you don't really like or not don't like, but if you could, you would do them over perhaps or do a different way. But overall, I think I'm very happy with it. Mm -hmm. What is the card that uh, you like more in the, in your deck? What is the? Hmm. I'm trying to think now. What? Well, certainly that five of stones is a good example because it's so. It's such a, it's a positive version, whereas the writer mm -hmm. deck is a very negative image. It's also a um, very powerful um, spiritual image, taken from a. Um, a rock painting in the American Southwest, so it's a lot of intensity. So that's an example of, some, of stones. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is this is it. So yeah, I'm that's, going. That, yeah, that's an example. Try. It's something I feel strongly about. You know. Yeah, I'm going to try to show people this this card. This is the, your five of stones. So mm -hmm. this is quite quite a beautiful card. A very strange. Um, yeah. So. We are going to talk more about your, your tarot deck, uh, but um, do you want to talk a little bit more about this Five of Stones, uh, the magic that is included in it? Well, as I said, the original inspiration was um, a rock painting in the American Southwest. And the image on the chest of the central figure, by the way, was found on the road here in Rhinebeck, where I live. I was walking with a dog and the highway people had uh, painted that triangle, and then the sort of golden thing in the center was the sort of cross of a flower on the head um, was actually a spike knocked into the ground to mark something in the roadwork and then a painting they did on top of it. So that very magical image is actually a very practical image originally. Okay. Um, but it has, you know, to me it has this quality of something coming out of the rock spirit beings coming into the material world to heal us. The Native Americans who live there now, uh, they know that they didn't make those pictures. They came much later, and they have no way, no one has any idea who made them, actually. It's mysterious. But the mm -hmm. Indians who live there now refer to the image as the ghost healers, which to me is a wonderful expression. It's, you know, the, the sort of the healers who are spirits, ghosts, whatever term you want to use, coming out of the... Uh, Rock out of the earth into physical reality. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, if people use your deck, um, are they going? To, well, I have this feeling that uh, it's a very strong spiritual uh, deck. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think uh, um, that is true? That uh, people uh, that use your deck uh, can can get a, a strong spiritual feeling because. For me, the images are quite uh, strong, and they evoke quite a, a bit of magic uh, somehow. Um, so, what do you think that uh, people will enjoy more, or can try, uh, can use more uh, when they they uh, read tarot with your deck with the Chinese tribe? Um, I do think that it has a more magical quality than a lot of other decks. A lot of other decks are designed to be for more ordinary fortune telling. This is designed for more like, you know, shamanic journey kind of thing. So I think a lot of people who are open to that and don't want to, don't worry too much about, you know, whether something is traditional or whether it's what they recognize already, will have great experiences with it. And I've heard from many people who do. So um, I think that it really does have a lot of potential for people to use it in a very powerful way. Mm -hmm. um, so just just for uh, ending this this conversation, um, mm -hmm. what what would be the 
the the most important thing, uh, most important uh, uh, ideas and and things that we can expect from other talkings uh, or other conversations with you. Uh, what what can we expect to know more about this deck? Uh, okay. What what is magic and the things that you think that can be uh, talked about and, and that can interest people? Well, I think we might certainly talk about the use of nature um, figures for the suits rather than human objects. So instead of um, wands, cups, swords and stones, um, swords and pentacles, all of which are human cultural creations, we have trees, rivers, birds and stones. So objects of nature. So right away, there's a movement away from a specific human culture to our association with the natural world and the magic that's found in nature. So that's an example of the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some of the other issues um, that are raised in some specific cards, again, the lover's card is very important in that it represents the human, the human and the angel embracing passionately rather than someone choosing between two people or whatever the people think of as the lovers. So is there an individual card we could look at? Let me get the deck and we'll see what the cards have to say. I'll be right back. Okay. So while uh, we are expecting uh, Rachel, um, oh, she's, she's just coming back again. Uh, okay. Yes, she so is. I will okay. ask Shining Five what it considers to be the important things that we need to look at with this deck. We'll see okay. what happens. I'll be using what's called the art deck, the limited edition, which mm -hmm. there are no names and the colors are very intense. You have a copy of that, I know. Yeah, yeah, right here with me. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So first, you know, as you know, when I, when I do a reading with the Shining Tribe deck, I look at the bottom of each of the three piles after I split the deck into three uh, for a kind of teacher. So before we get to the question, these are teachers that the cards want to show us. So first we have the Five of Birds, which is a very, very intense card. And it has to do with the kind of shamanic dismemberment. So right away it's saying, you know, when you use me, prepare to be torn apart. <laughs> okay. Prepare to have your old tarot self torn to pieces so that you're open to new things being put inside you, which is what happens to shamans. They're, they're torn open and then their bodies are infused with new kinds of energy for magical power. So right, it's a very intense beginning. Okay. And the second one, however, is the star card, which is the goddess Persephone, um, returning from the underworld to the world of the living. So this is the recovery card. Uh, mm -hmm. The star card comes after the tower, and the tower card has certain similarities to the five of birds. Um, it's also a dismemberment card. So this is saying, well, first I tear you apart, and then I restore you. Okay. But also, the star card as Persephone is all about initiation into mysteries. So the Shining Tribe um, tells us to initiate us into mysteries, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom card of the teachers is the um, speaker of rivers, which is all the king of cups, all about storytelling. The king of cups, one of the ways to look at that card in the writer deck and other decks is that he um, it contains a sort of, you know, artistic creative ability and sensitivity, but doesn't let it out. <laughs> he holds it himself. Whereas the speaker of rivers um, is sharing everything. So there's a lot to share, there are stories to tell, this particular card is rooted in two interesting sources. One is a dream that I wrote about, in, not, not a dream I had, a dream I created for a novel called Unquenchable Fire. And the other is um, a famous uh, mystical rabbi named Nachman, who at a certain point in his uh, life gave up teaching and only told stories. So the deck is telling us that it works in stories rather than concepts. And as you probably know, in a lot of Western tradition, it's all about concept, all intellectual. So this particular thing is saying uh, the Shining Tribe is more stories than systems and diagrams and charts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
then what is important is the three of stones, which is um, perfected work, working at the highest level, okay, um, okay. working with other, joining together harmony. So what the deck wants us to know um, that we can work with it and work at the highest level. Okay. It's not something that uh, is closed to people who want to work seriously with tarot. And then a uh, couple of supporting energies. We get, uh, first of all, we get the um, place of stones, the page of pentacles. And it says, uh, with this deck, or maybe the work of this deck, we create a kind of um, grounded place to be. Connect ourselves to nature. Um, we don't move too far away from um, the physical into the sort of you know, spiraling off into mental things. It's a very grounded card. And on the other side is another uh, three, uh, the three of rivers, which is people's lifeblood flowing together. Mm -hmm. okay. So cards seem to emphasize um, joint energy, working together, lifeblood flowing together, very much a communal mm -hmm. kind of energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. So uh, we leave for next some other conversations to go deeper into your deck. Yeah. And uh, Rachel, it was great, really great, really fantastic yeah. to be talking to you again. It's okay. been a while. You've been here in Portugal, and it's been I've been missing you, and people are missing you anyway. Yeah. Many, yeah. not just me. Um, so we'll talk again very soon. And. Okay. Um, um, love, Rachel. A big, big hug yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Talk to you soon, then. Bye. Bye. Oh.